Hello and welcome to the Nintendo Review Podcast. Um, as always, I'm joined by I Hate Every Game Bar Toad, Greg. How are you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> you, seem you, seem, you seem distressed. I was taken by surprise by your introduction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know where it came from to be honest I don't know why I said that um, but we'll see on what you're playing see if you do like another game <laughs> um, I'm still blown away the fact that you you were so positive about Toad I was still absolutely loving it to be honest I just finished the, the first uh, book today or no yesterday and like, yeah still amazing still amazing um and Lee, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. And in a bit of good news, I just had Todd arrive today. As I was walking down to work, uh, oh, wow. the, the security guard, because we were in a block of apartments, the security guard called me over. Hey, sign for this. There's my Toad. I'll be playing that tomorrow. Can't wait. And obviously, you you never played it on the Wii U either, so this is completely completely brand new for you. Yeah, it is completely brand new. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. On one level, you're a very, very lucky man. And on another level, I'm still disgusted that you never picked it up for the review. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm torn. But um, no, you're in for an absolute treat. I'm, I, I, I've, I've got it. I, I need to get, get stuck into it as well at some point. But I'm um, not quite but, yet. I've got another 45 games to play. you did play through. the Wii U version, yes? Yeah, finished it 100%. Um, yeah, and absolutely loved it. Absolutely, yeah, incredible game, as Greg um, keeps keeps talking about. Um, so good, but we're just going to go straight into it. We've got a lot to cover this week. Um, and we're going to start, as always, with the news. So the first bit of news today is, um, is some good news. We've got quite a lot of good news today. Um, the first one is um, Super Rare Games. I've announced a sort of a load of physical releases. Um, personally, I've kind of gone a little bit all digital this generation, which I never thought I would do. But I know a lot of people still love the physical games, um, and they've announced, uh, you know, a range. They've got Loves in a Dangerous Space Time, the Mutant Month Collection, Worms, Knights of Pen and Paper, One and Two, the Fairune Collection, which is the uh, three three games in one, isn't it? Um, the Adventure Pals is the one that I'm slightly tempted by. It looks like a great little colourful platform game. Haven't got it yet on the eShop, so I'm, I'm tempted by that one. But do any of these games appeal to you guys? Are you physical, digital? Do you care, Greg? Um, I'm still pretty much physical, and most of that is down to like uh, the space limitations of like on the on the Switch because like buying a, a big memory card that's a big expense. Yeah, I just got one 400 gig, 100 yeah. pound. Finally Aye, did it. So pretty steep like <laughs> yeah it's true you managed to jump in at the right time on the amazon sales darren yeah i just made it so i thought 100, 100 quid was my limit i was talking we, we were talking about it on the discord the day before weren't we yeah and then it was yeah. like lightning sale 100 quid i was like oh, i've got to get it now and i'm in the mode so I'm, I'm, I'm pleased about that but yeah so sorry great carry on um i sort of forget where i was there <laughs> um you were I getting like, you were getting physical <laughs> <laughs> as usual um i am starting to get a wee bit irritated by changing cartridges all the time so i probably would like uh, to move digitally but like the list of games are um i think there's only really like worms wmd that's really like catching my eye because i loved uh, worms armageddon growing up had some great four player matches so please I'd get do- it Please, I'm desperate for someone to play with. It's bound to be on sale at some point. Like I've seen it on the PS4 for like it must be like eight ninety nine or something several times. So if it comes to that price on Switch, then you, you I'll definitely jump. download it. Yeah. I can't believe it's not been on, in one of the sales so far. I cannot believe it. It's a great version of it as well. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's been a long time since I played Worms. Yeah, and I've heard good things about that Worms as well from you, Darren, especially. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, looking at this, if oh, like Mutant Muds, I've got Mutant Muds already, so that's a no. And, and the rest of the games, you know, N++, I'm sure I played that on 3DS. I can't remember if I played it on 3DS or Wii U. And the other ones just don't interest me. Even the Adventure Pals, I've heard so many good things about. I'm not interested in picking it up physical. So it's one of those things like the Worms. Yeah, it'd be lovely to have the physical copy. But super rare games do charge super high prices because of their limited runs. And if there's a sale on the digital store, the eShop, it's going to get picked up from there instead. Yeah, because that's the thing, it's, 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 it's uh, super limited games, is it limited games or limited Sup- run games? Yeah, limited run games. Yeah. Something like that. Who also do physical releases like these guys. Um, and they are a good 5, 10, 15 pound more than the, the, the uh, digital versions, which is, you know, it's kind of difficult. They do sometimes throw in some special features and stuff like that, but it is a, it is a tricky one. Um, and like Greg, I've just got so lazy that I've, I have not played a game I've really wanted to play, because <laughs> I can't be 
to change the cartridge. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and already I'm like, I'm definitely getting FIFA 19 digital because, you know, I just play it too much. I don't want to um, do it. But, um, but ultimately, it's still amazing that these companies exist who are picking up these smaller indie games and releasing them f- f- physically. It's great for the developer. How much of a rush must it be for them to have a physical version of their game? And um, it's also good for collectors and, you know, people who prefer f- physical stuff. So it's, it's nothing but good news, but maybe not for us three. Um, so the the next bit of news, and th- to be honest, it's, it's quite surprising at how under the radar this bit of news has gone. I felt anyway. I don't know how you guys feel, but so the you know everybody asked when um, the, the the South Park sequel was announced for the for the Switch, the fractured, Fra- fractured butthole. But, butthole, butthole. Oh yeah, it took me a while to get that gag. <laughs> I always thought it was fractured butthole. And then people, obviously, because yeah, I'm, I'm slow, maybe. But um, but the, anyway, they've announced the first one. It's coming to the Switch, digital only, um, in September. It's great news, but no one's talking about it that much. You know, I know you love the sequel, um, Lee. Are you going to pick this one up? And Greg, does it interest you in the slightest, any of them? But Lee, are you, are you going to get it? Well, it's it's going to be released digitally only on eShop. In, they, they said by September, so it, it could drop as early as August, but nobody's expecting it until September this is the South Park the Stick of Truth mm. I would love to I really really did enjoy the first one I, I watch all the cart- South Park cartoons and all that anyway uh, the humour and the second one you mean the second one yeah Fractured Butthole it's like actually playing through the cartoon it looks identical the humour's identical it's written by Matt Trey and no, sorry Matt Stone and Trey Parker everything's done by them and I would love to, but someone accused me online on Twitter of being demanding more than I should do as a gamer because I said this has got to be cheap. This is such an old game now that's been out on Xbox and PS4 and everything else and you can pick it up for like 8 quid in other places. So if they're going to be asking the 40 quid that they asked for the sequel, it's going to have to wait for a massive sale. Yeah, I'm with you there. I mean, but we have we had this conversation every couple of weeks don't we saying <laughs> yeah. that surely it's going to be cheap but we, and a part of the secret you know but we all kind of know that it's not going to be you know but 30 quid i can see i can see sort of like hitting the middle you know like, like obviously spyro and crash they're coming out at around 30 pound like i can see this coming out of that if they ch- try full price it's going to do nothing but fail yeah personally i would probably jump in around the 20 quid mark yeah that's fair enough that's fair enough uh, Greg, do you, do you even like do you like South Park? Um, or are you interested in these games? Uh, it's not something that I really watched that much when I was when I was younger. Like I remember there sort of being like a, a big craze about it at the time, and a lot of people at school watched it and stuff. But I never really get into it. It was only really like uh, a few years ago. Had a wee bit of heartbreak, like, and uh, I remember watching double bells of it. Just <laughs> like sort of helped me through the the struggle. So there was like that and like bands and stuff. Just watched some real random stuff on tv but like uh i always like i think i heard that the stick of truth is probably like the better game of the two so i would say i'm probably more interested in it than than the sequel but like like lee says you know if the price is probably going it's probably going to be that switch tax again so i'm probably going to be out until maybe there's well, a they haven't got an excuse for that point. switch tax because it's not physical so they're not released on a cartridge since when did they need an excuse <laughs> well no, not true. True. I mean, yeah obviously but i'm just saying uh, well, well, we'll see. Maybe we'll be we'll be pleasantly surprised uh, from that. Um, b- b- but as I mentioned um, uh, uh, within that about like Spyro and Crash are coming out at thirty quid. Obviously, Crash has come out and is doing very, very well on the Switch. Um, but but onto Spyro, it's obviously coming out soon for Xbox and PS4. This the past week, the the official site, the UK site of of Spyro. We've got like a drop down menu of the version you want to select, and it had the Steam version and the Switch version, and neither have been announced. So, I mean, everybody thought it anyway. It isn't. A, it isn't like a, an error. This is, just, uh, you know, well, it is an error. But what I'm saying is, it's a leak. Is it? it's not like they've put the wrong version down. It's the right version. This is blatantly coming to the Switch, isn't it? Spyro the Trilogy is, is is another game that's coming, surely. Yeah. Yes, it's got to be coming. Do you want to play it though? No. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like I I don't really like how it looks. To be honest, um, the PS1 games sort of like they had just there's something about that graphical style back then. It was like it was like. What? I, <laughs> I mean, oh, so sorry, bad, bad, like, bad. Honestly, like the the graphics on like PS One games and like N sixty four games and stuff, they just like yeah. there's something special about them to me. It's just like special. Uh, it's just like that period of like growing up, like going from two D to three D. It was just like it was amazing. Like anything was possible back then, and like I got more impressed by graphics back then than I do now. 
and there's just something about yeah, yeah. the the style of this remake of Spyro that's just not clicking with me at all and like I kind of liked the first Spyro game when I played it on PS1 yeah okay that's interesting I mean it, I, I, I kind of joke really but I, I sort of agree that was like a genuinely sort of impressive time that I the, the, like you maybe the only time I gen, genuinely cared about graphics in, in a sense that but but because it changed gameplay so much, I think that's fundamentally the reason why it yeah. wasn't. You know, when we played Tekken and and you know Mario and things like that, it wasn't just oh this is a beautiful fighting game or this is a beautiful platformer. It was like oh this is a completely different fighting game and this is a completely different platformer game. So it, so they kind of went hand in hand. And I do agree with you. I kind of don't. I've lost the nostalgia for that for that era. I look at them now and I do think they look pig ugly. And I think the new Spyro actually is, is a great version. It is a great modern version of what of what that was. So I'm and I quite like them. I prefer. I mean, Crash, I, I can stand. Spyro, I actually don't mind. So I'm tempted, and I also think it's a game Hugo could play. My 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 kid, my kid. I think it's so. I'm tempted. It's definitely got the visuals and the simple kind of platforming elements for a younger child. Yes, it's got that. You know, it's a kind of Kirby kind of PlayStation game, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm tempted by it, and but again, it's another game i'm sure it'll do really well on, on every platform again this is it's nothing but but good news lee Li, have you ever played spyro or, or have you always just been nintendo i have been a nintendo freak for the rest ever since the nes came out and my dad purchased one um i've never had any sega any playstation but i've popped on commodore 64 and amiga and that's about it everything else has been nintendo so this kind of spyro the dragon <laughs> wow. nostalgia has just skipped me so i don't know what it's about i was just happily beavering away on n64 playing uh, super mario 64 playing a better game <laughs> <laughs> no, that is true that is tr- absolutely true um, but are you did you not play the gamecube one no no i didn't i didn't even knew i didn't even know there was a gamecube one yeah there was um yeah. Did you are, you? are you tempted by this then? You know, if, if you've never had an opportunity for it, or is it, are you going to like see see how reviews go? I'll see how reviews go, but it it is looking like it would favour a father and a younger son like yourself, Darren. My son's a little bit too old for what this looks like. I don't know how hard, difficult the platforming gets later on, but just looking from a stylistic point, it looks a bit childish okay that's fair enough that's fair enough and um, we'll, we'll see we'll see how it goes yeah. um so the next bit of news anyway is something that we we did chat about we had some amazing sort of predictions and what this is going to be mario kart they've announced that they're going to release more updates we were like new cups new tracks new battle modes <laughs> an amazing new online infrastructure with missions and then a few days later they're like oh here's here's link in his breath of the wild outfit this is and, it. Uh, the master cycle <laughs> in, in all seriousness i think it's great i think he i love the fact that uh, the breath of the wild link is in there and i don't expect this to be it in, in all seriousness but but i did i did have a chuckle um have any of you guys tried the new link out i haven't tried him no but he's looking cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, no it, like it hasn't been enough to make me stick mario kart eat on again do you have the cartridge <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> that's a problem <laughs> well, there you go my digital uh, <laughs> um do, do you think this is it or do you reckon there is going to be more um I th- there's probably going to be more but whether it's going to be as much as we want it to be i'm not sure like maybe they'll like you wouldn't be surprised by a few extra characters maybe like they'll throw like uh, samus in there or something i don't know about new tracks they wouldn't throw samus in if they weren't going to have a metroid track surely well i think surely it'll be a good track to have that'd be awesome it, it'd be nice if they uh, kind of dropped in and our breath of the wild track as well you know start in the in the plains and drive all the way up to the top of of the mountain and back down the other side you know so you go from the heat to and uh, maybe through the desert as well up to the icy mountain and back around oh, the world's longest track i like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see. I'm still, I'm still sold on Lee's idea of a um, massive sort of online kind of um, additions with with the with the new online service and the app and stuff like that. But we will see. We will see. Um, so next is on the Zelda theme, uh, Monster Hunter is getting a collaboration with Zelda Breath of the Wild so you can get Zelda Breath of the Wild clothes and the um, your little cat has a little Korok mask and stuff like that. I think this is. 
I think this is really good. I thought, you know, the, did they do this for the last one? I, I, in my, my memory, saying yes, but they did the kind of Twilight Princess, you know, the classic green Zelda formation. So but I thought it, so, yeah. Yeah, but in the in the Japanese version of the generation, you know, was it like Double Cross? They have already had this Breath of the Wild, so it was it was expected that this was coming, and it's nice that it has. Okay, yeah, exactly. I mean, this is a weird game, and I know you're excited for it, Lee, and, and, yeah. and I wasn't. I I loved the. You know, tr- uh, Monster Hunter Try on the Wii U. Played it a lot. Really loved it. I love the concept of it. I've not played loads of Monster Hunter, and I've not played it for a while. So in some ways, I should be really excited about this. Monster Hunter World has soured it all for me. You know, I understand. Maybe it shouldn't. Maybe I'm. Maybe it absolutely shouldn't. But the more as we get closer to it, the more I'm. I'm kind of getting a bit excited for it and thinking, oh, maybe I should dive in. I think if I know a couple of people who I can play with a lot, I, I might. I might finally jump in. Um, I know you said you've never really kind of gone for it Greg does it appeal to you if you can get a few few mates together and hunt some monsters nah <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of them series I just I, it's not really for me so no, I think I might. You're out. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Right. So, uh, the favourite game that we like to talk about, or I like to talk about, I still love this game. I'm still expecting big things from its updates. And the fact that they are updating it so much is giving me a lot of cause for optimism. And this is Mario Tennis. So, they, they've, they've done a second update since its launch. And this was to nerf Bowser Jr., which is quite surprising. I've heard a few people sort of like say, oh, Bowser Jr. is too good. And I never really got that. It's Boo who does my head in. Yeah, me too. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, it's trick shots. So it's irritating. But, um, so, they've nerfed Bowser as a junior and a couple of other things like with the, with the trick shots in terms of how much kind of energy it uses if you if you don't hit it and stuff like that. So I was just really pleased that they, they, they keep updating this and surely at some point they're going to tweak the, the kind of the, the, maybe the bigger infrastructure of how um, online works and the kind of the, 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 the kind of settings and stuff like that. But um, how are you guys feeling about Mario Tennis now? Um, are you still having? Are you still dabbling with it? Are you still enjoying it? I played Greg the other day and I the distance between Taiwan and Ireland, Northern Ireland, even with a fast internet connection here, and his internet connection not too bad as well, we uh, terrible lag. Um, it might just have been one of those days and all that, but I'd get to the ball, I'd go to swing for it, and the ball would be past me before I finished my swing. Or maybe you're just not very good at it. <laughs> that, that's, that's what we were laughing at. It's like, uh, <laughs> m- maybe it is my age, you know? <laughs> I've, I've completely lost it. <laughs> <laughs> No, but there were times when my character was just sticking, you know, he was just frozen, and then, whoop, oh, and he popped, and you've gone, point's gone. So I haven't put much time in with this. I have played a few more games with my son, and because of the less of the lag, you know, we're playing some nice games together. But online, I, I yeah. really let this slip. I'm afraid this is like arms. It's something I want to play more, but just can't get around to. And just because, because, yeah, that's a shame. You need to move away. You need to move back to the <laughs> to UK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I probably haven't played it as much as I would really have liked to either. And with these wee tweaks, I'm not even sure I'll notice, to be honest. Nah, no, exactly. These are all very small sort of tweaks. We'll, uh, but but it's promising though, isn't it? You know, in terms of the biggest stuff that we want, that we may get that. Yeah, if, if they if they <laughs> tweak in like they tweak the trick shots this week. So if the tr- the trick shot now is it, you get less energy if you pull it off. The amount of energy we can increase is less. So they're constantly putting little tweaks in for balance balancing to make sure everybody has a fair game yes it, it is in- interesting what they're doing but when when's the big one coming darren i don't know well so maybe they're still just sort of collating that but they want to tweak the gameplay f- maybe they want to perfect the gameplay first so that that's kind of um open running before they're going to do the bigger stuff but it's been out a month and they've already done two updates so it's like every couple of weeks they've released little updates i'm i'm very very excited about um the inevitable changes and i want my five set epic <laughs> with greg although it wouldn't be five sets it would just be three sets wouldn't it but um Ooh, <laughs> fighting talk <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so we, I mean, that's, that's our half an hour Mario. It's our tennis uh, discussion. Um, <laughs> next, so I get on, on the kind of new game front, Bethesda, and I'm, this is pleasing to hear. Um, so obviously they've um, released Skyrim and Doom. They've released Wol- Wolfenstein, Fallout Shelter. They've announced Elder Scrolls Legends, the card game um, at E3, which is which is all great. We all want more, and that they've said that the Switch is doing really well. And they are going to continue supporting it. Um, the direct quote is, "With whatever we're making, that will run and run well." So basically, 
basically any, anything that can run on the Switch. But I just think if Wolfenstein 2 can run pretty well on the Switch, then a lot of their stuff probably will. So I, again, it's amazing news. Let's you know, let's just keep seeing more more stuff from Bethesda. And some more good news. It's been a more positive week this week. Well, so, sort of positive. Basically, Octopath Traveler has sold a lot better than they anticipated. So it means that it's very successful. It sold over 100,000 units in Japan alone. I was in game yesterday, and I and as I was queuing up, and I was queuing up maybe five, ten minutes to sell a couple of games and get some eShop vouchers, the, I saw three people go up and ask about Octopath Traveler, and it was sold out. So the game, it, it, br- brilliantly, new IP, and it's it's clearly very popular. The, the annoying thing is, is that people who want it physically are struggling to get it. Even in England, in, it, it's it's difficult to kind of get a hold of when um, you know it's obviously Nintendo aren't huge here, but in Japan in particular, did they say there's like a one to two month waiting list in Japan or something mental like that? So so it's you know kind of good and bad news in that regard, but it's always good to see success, especially for kind of original IP. Did any of you boys pick it up? I didn't myself. No, I was about to ask that. No, no, I haven't got it either. It's something I do want. It's just the look of it as well. You know, it's got it's got that. That style, yeah. I really, really like the field of depth and uh, going just going back to that, uh, you know, simple RPG roots. I would like to give it a try, but not just yet. Captain Toad is going to be my new tool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's like you, it's like one of those ones where I want to play it, I want to like it, but I know I probably won't. It's as simple as that. I just, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to um, give, even give it a shot, to be honest. Yeah, I still have like uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 to finish, and I often find that like whenever I look at my backlog, it's nearly always the RPGs that are just <laughs> left sitting. You know, it's always easier to go and play something else that you know is going to be shorter. So like, it's, it's, sometimes it's too daunting to think of like I don't know how long Octopath is. Is it? I've heard it's maybe like 80 to 100 hours, possibly something like that. Yes, and yeah. that's way if way. You want to do everything? Yeah. Yeah, it's way too much of a time commitment. Like, I thought I would wait and see what the game was like, but I may just try the demo and see if it hooks me in for that three hours or however long it is. Yeah, sort of same. Say it's the same as you. Yeah, it's like uh, you know, you say like eighty to a hundred hours. I could finish. 10 games in that time um, or play it's how I feel about films and TV I do, I do watch a bit of TV but not loads and a lot of it is because TV is such a massive time investment if it's like 3 seasons or something it's like 60 hours of TV and I'm like well I could watch 30 films I'd rather watch 30 <laughs> films than 3 seasons or whatever so um, but I've, same with RPGs it's just I, I think I'm gone, gone beyond playing RPGs now and I'd just rather play a, 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 you know, a, bit, a bigger variety of games but on to obviously we was chatting about a 2 is earlier game the, the Mutant Woods uh, collection they've been working for quite a long time now on a game called treasure notes and it was coming to the 3ds and then when the switch got announced they said we're also making it for the th- uh, for, for the switch and they announced yesterday i think or a couple of days ago that it is now not coming to the 3ds at all to be honest i forgot all that it was even coming to the 3ds it's for me it's really obvious that it was you know they, they released chicken wiggle at, what a year ago or even more and it bombed yeah, really, really badly bombed. But it, that's coming yeah, to the. Exactly. Did, did that uh, that went on to Kickstarter and did it Kickstarter, for Chicken yeah. Wiggle? Did it fulfill its goals? It did. I oh, backed it. So good, it's, good, it's, good. Um, it's coming out this autumn. So, so I mean, this is no surprise. Uh, personally, I wish Nintendo had the same philosophy as um, a Tui and just binned everything up on the 3DS. But. Uh, we'll see about that. It is another nail in the coffin, isn't it? Yeah, it's obvious um, that it's, it's going to happen. So it's good, it's good. But I'm quite looking forward to Treasure Notes on the Switch as well. So yeah. we'll see. I think they're a pretty good developer. And next on the news, there's a lot of news and w- of the um, on there. We actually have four pages of news, which we've cut down to a page. So this is just a quarter of it, and already on my mouth dry. <laughs> um, so version 5.1 of Fortnite is now available, and it's quite a quite a, 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 been a big update the past because of season five's launch. So and then they've done this quick. Launch to re release playground for the third I think this is the third time they've tried releasing this. Um, and hopefully they've they've nailed it. So playground is the mode where you and your mates can just get together and it, you know it's it, it's you can just stay in it and have to have more form practice building and so it's a bit more kind of what it says actually it is a playground for you to get used to the mechanics because it is a daunting prospect kind of jumping into Fortnite. So the other thing with with, with Fortnite as well is I, I bought the battle pass because I wanted to give it a go and I don't like it. I have decided I don't like it. I've, even with the battle pass and I'm doing the missions and I'm, I'm playing it and I'm just like I it, it, the controls if it was cool. Call of Duty. I think I'd like it more you know, if it was tied to controls, and I felt as if I like I could be better at kind of shooting and you know kind of controlling the game. It just feels a bit too floaty for me. It's and I don't want to. I just don't enjoy controlling it. I don't. I don't enjoy playing it as much as I thought I would. I think the only time I like it is when you with a few mates and you get in the squads of four and there's yeah, four of you yeah, and you're voice chatting. I enjoy that. 
but the 50-50 and the one on your own is I'm just not good enough I mean not to sound pathetic but I'm just not good enough at it and the way people play it you go on and people are so good people put so much time into it that you know it's just it's, 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 it's difficult to penetrate and then the matchmaking isn't sophisticated enough for, to put loads of gimps together so you go on it and it's just too difficult you've also got a problem where you, you've got console players uh, versus PC players and the PC players you can tell who's a PC player because they are building structures so fast and that you've got no chance on a console because you have to cycle through everything oh no my, my, my uh, platform needs to point down the the opposite way I've got to click 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 then I got to change material I got to click click across two times to change material it's it becomes a very slow process where I, I, I've just built four walls around and the PC player who's shooting at me has just built a tower it just puts you at a distinct disadvantage a as well. yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, I think you can change the settings. So you, you just play with switch owners, can't you? Or can you not do that? I'm sure you can. Yes, but would you find yeah, a can. game? Well, that's yeah, that's another issue. But um, have you guys played it, played it anymore? Or? No, I I honestly just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair enough. That's fair enough. <laughs> But you know, it's obviously the biggest game in the world at the minute and a lot of people love it. And I think if you can dedicate the time to it, then you can improve and get better. You feel as if you can make progress, but I just I just, I just don't enjoy it enough to want to get better at it, personally. But um, that's a bit of a neg negative view there. Um, but anyway, um, so another new game announced, and that is the Minecraft Story Mode Season 2. So obviously we've already had Season 1, um, and the second one's coming out on August the 7th, so in a couple of weeks' time. Lee, our resident Minecraft fan, did you play the... the um, Season one. I the didn't. Story mode. No, I didn't play the story mode. Uh, it, okay. go, it goes back to The Walking Dead as well because it's the Telltale Telltale Games, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. To, and yeah. it's it's that kind of point and click adventure, that kind of thing going on. And I would like to have my son play through it and just be a spectator and watch, but. We never got around to it, and and the pro one of the <laughs> the biggest problem with not getting around to the story mode is that Minecraft itself, the proper game, gets in the way. It's like, oh, do I buy this and then play through this, or we could just be playing Minecraft? Oh, we play Minecraft. Yeah, so you not you, you won't be picking this one up either. Uh, very unlikely, unless they do one of those unusual things and bundle them both together and stick the first one in for free. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Maybe in a maybe they'll both be that cheap enough uh, for the price of one in a, in a future sale. Yeah, who knows? Um, it's it's the kind of thing that would be in a sale. You'd think but um, we'll see about that so now we're gonna move on to what we've been playing Lee tell me about this game that you've been playing um, this week um I fired it back up this week I actually played it about two months ago it's uh it's a game called death road to Canada and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna put Greg off straight away by saying this is a randomly generated road trip RPG. How'd you like that uh, <laughs> selling point, Greg? <laughs> Zoning out now. <laughs> it's not as bad as it sounds. Why is it randomly generated? Well, everything is randomly generated. The locations you go to, the events that happen, the even the personality of the survivors. And I'll tell you why they're survivors. They change every time you start a new game. And this is a game like the Banner Saga. It's a game of two hearts. Halves. So the Banner Saga had one half tactical RPG, the other half text-driven dialogue narrative story. Well, Death Row to Canada has an action zombie slashing RPG in a kind of 16-bit style from a slanted top-down view, which is where the meat of the game is. That's quite fun. And the other half is, once again, a text-driven narrative story about getting your up to four survivors in a team from Florida to Canada. And you can choose various box decisions and humorous outcomes happen. Now, the game starts when you're driving down the road in your vehicle and you're given three or four random locations to either loot so you can increase your survival chances you know you can loot weapons ammo food health packs petrol new survivors you can find new survivors there recruit them to your team if you want to or you can have a siege style attack where you you're in a in a very enclosed space like a shack and you've got up to 500 zombies attacking you so every level is random and it tends to start off easy with maybe 20 zombies throughout a single building um, and then later you've just got so many zombies on 
stage at one time it's quite imposing so these these zombies are kind of the the George A Romero walking dead shambling zombies they're quite slow um, if they get near you they start whittling down your health if they whittle it down too much you'll drop and you'll have a horde of zombies on you which fortunately then you can change over to one of your other players the other four players you can hold up the three weapons during an excursion so you get out of your car you can grab any weapon that is trapped in your boot of your car I was nearly calling it the trunk then because this is an American game they call it the trunk the boot of your car some weapons are weak like planks of wood they snap they break some are tougher like aluminum baseball bats uh, which are better for cranial deformation aluminium <laughs> yeah, <laughs> aluminium there you are. I've gone all American on you this is what happens when you teach American English all day <laughs> do you really do you, are you not like are you not defying and being like no well, well, when I came across to uh, Taiwan, first of all, I want my, my, my goal was to have all the kids in class, as I walked in, go, Hello, boy <laughs> 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 And that never got around to it. The, the bosses of the Anchin bands, which are cram schools over here, they're quite strict. They want American English only. And I end up putting a slight American accent on, too. Oh, my God. I, I couldn't do it. I don't know how you do it. But, but um, I, I reckon <laughs> I'd rather survive a zombie apocalypse than um, do what you're doing. But, um, so, but back to that. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's a fun game to play, you know. they got so many different weapons to choose from. Umbrellas, shotguns, nail baseball bats, so you can feel like Negan or The Walking Dead. Cricket bats, chainsaws, flamethrowers, swords, pipe bombs, grenades. Uh, you name it. Uh, you can even pick up the furniture and throw it at the shambling hordes that are coming to eat your brains. Uh, so the RPG elements come from leveling up your character. And you can level up things like fitness, your medical skills, your team's morale, loyalty, attitude. Uh, and fitness and strength tend to be the two you want to focus on. Um, because you, if your fitness is not there, you can only hit once or twice before your face grows red and you you start sweating uh, you're unable to hit another swing until you cool down so you got you got to have this tactic of one hit back off a little bit cool down one hit back off so you're always constantly thinking about your character's finesse but you know after a few levels you can you can have a, a five or six swings without getting tired strength then just means that you can smash a zombie's head in uh, with one hit instead of four there, there are other things you can okay. pick up as okay. you're going along zombo points that upgrade perks so your starting character gets greater healing for example or is fitter in the beginning other side of the game the text driven narrative isn't as good but it can be quite funny you're basically stuck in the car with your four survivors up to four survivors and by the way two of those survivors can be player led so you can have uh, two player co-op local that's where it's really really fun if you play on your own i couldn't recommend this sit down with oh, somebody really? playing with you and it's a lot of fun I think if you're playing it in a single player session, you'll get bored of it very quickly. Oh, okay. You sold me on it for a little while then. But I, I, I'm trying to sell you on it because it is fun. If, if you can get two people together, you can lose three or four hours playing this easily. Just like that Wolverblade uh, uh, game I tried to sell to you the week before. Oh, no, I've been sold on that one. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, I just don't get to play co-op. I don't think um, a three-year-old is... Um, going to be kind of suitable for uh, you know uh, a zombie zombies bash, yeah destroying yeah. game but um it does sound good is there a purpose to it or is it like an on like how is it how long you can you survive or is it well, getting to Canada or you know yeah how getting to Canada so I said I played two months ago and um, never finished it popped it on this week with my son and we actually finished the game in I think of a final run from just one run but because we've been RPGing all the time every time you start then because you've been collecting points your character starting character will be tougher than it was before so you're more likely to finish as you put in 15 hours into the game um, we finished it we saw the end credits roll uh, it took about an hour from start to finish after 15 hours of leveling up beforehand so in a way it's like enter the gungeon in the sense of yes. you go as far as you can die and then start from the very beginning start and go from again. the beginning but when, but, yeah. but when you die you, you take 
the kind of skills. Okay, yeah, that still sounds quite interesting. Um, it, it is quite but interesting. You think it would be boring on your own? Yeah, and and what, one of the boring things which you couldn't do with like a younger child. My son is at that age where his reading has now progressed to a level where he can get through. Is the text based where we can, you know, and, and and a decision will come up and go. Oh, a bear just steps out in front of your car. Jeff, who's one of your mates, he throws his car keys at it, and now the bear has the car keys in the mouth. What do you do? A, for example, shoot the bear. B, run away. C, wrestle shoot the bear. Shoot your mate in the face. <laughs> Choose, yeah, after, after killing Jeff, what do you do? Feed him to the bear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you can choose an answer, then choose a character to perform the activity that you said. So if you say, like, oh, shoot the bear, Jeff, you shoot the bear. Then if Jeff has got good gun skills, you kill the bear, you get the keys back. But if Jeff doesn't have good gun skills, he'll mess up, the bear will maul him, Jeff may die and then you're walking you've got no car because you've got no car keys so there's all these uh, little bits and pieces which as as like two adults playing it you can have a laugh together reading and deciding what what will happen as well frustration wise this game uh, well if you're in the fighting section only player one can go through a door to open a door and to get into the next area then player two will follow him it is stupid but so you face these situations where player two is stuck by a horde and there's a door right behind you and they can't do anything about it but die because player one can't get through to that door to get through in time oh my god it's, it's just little little things like that and and if you play it in touch um, on handheld there's no touch screen integration so choosing your weapon and all that yes when you're on the screen you got to flick through the d-pad and all that to choose your weapon which can be a little bit cumbersome it would make perfect sense to have it on the touch screen to, hey I need this weapon hey I need this weapon instead of cycling through every weapon all the time but no there's nothing in handheld mode there's no ease of access however a bit, bit sloppy it is a little bit sloppy in, in its user interface Overall, though, the game is enjoyable, but you do need that couch awesome. co-op buddy. Fair enough. Sounds good. Um, sounds very good. Uh, Greg, is is your game as appealing as Death Road to Canada? Um, well, Death Road to Canada didn't really sound all that appealing to me. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this, is, uh, this is probably um, the same sort of level, I would guess. Although, Ooh. I think the game probably reviewed worse. <laughs> I would imagine. Um, I'm back to 3DS this week, and I've been playing Spirit Camera, The Cursed Memoir. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a bit of a random one. Didn't that have a, a demo? Um, I no, I don't think so. I can't remember if I played it. Or, no, I have. I definitely haven't played it as a as a purchasable game, but I can't remember. It sounds familiar. Anyway, okay, sorry, Greg. Th- this is the Fatal Frame game, isn't it? Yeah. See, there's like a wee AR book with it so oh, I can't yeah. imagine there being a demo with it but um, I basically like uh, a few months ago it must have been towards the end of the end of last year maybe the start of this year like I sort of got back into the 3DS a wee bit and like picked up a few games for it and like this was cheap in CX so I picked it up as well just because for me like the best games on the DS were like the ones where it was doing stuff different like uh, you have your like Elite Beat Agents or Trauma Center or like even like Phantom Hourglass or whatever I, I really enjoyed it and like thought the touchscreen stuff was a lot of fun and like playing Zelda in a different way and like uh, even stuff like Another Code where like you're doing like really different stuff like reflecting the screens together and stuff just to solve puzzles that's like really good so like I was interested in picking up uh, something like completely different for the 3DS because I, I sort of feel like the 3DS didn't really have as many of those sort of quirky and interesting titles as the DS did so like even though this had terrible reviews I thought you know what I'll give it a go so like just this week I just decided to give it a go because I know it's a short game but like I I actually thought I would have it finished for this week but I'm probably only about halfway through it basically you start off um, and I don't really play games for the story that much so I can honestly tell you what the story is (laughs) because I just don't care but like there's basically this uh, I think it's called the Purple Diary and uh, it's th- this AR book where you use the cameras on the 3DS to look at it so like a large part of the game is like uh, say I'm playing it down in my kitchen you'll see like your kitchen or whatever your surroundings are through the camera on the 3DS and there'll be this girl uh, Maya or Maya I'm not sure how you pronounce it but she'll be talking to you and she's like she's supposed to be standing there and you catch it but it's kind of this weird sort of like she's sort of floating there it's it's a wee bit odd looking so you'll talk to her quite a lot like in between like sections where you have to look 
at this uh, AR book in front of you and most of the game is about having to find a specific page in this book then you'll have to like look at a specific part of the page and like zoom in to like the correct position and make sure you're in like a well lit room and like the pages aren't creased and stuff because it's really hard to pick up <laughs> like that's been my main criticism so far every time I go to look at a page it's been really really fiddly it's like it's not just been a case of like setting the book down on a table and I can like easily like maneuver around and look in a 3D space around this uh, around this book. It's been like sometimes I've been having to hold the book just in my hand and trying to like angle it to get the the right light and conditions. And even when I do and try and get the 3DS in the, the perfect position where it's gonna work, I'm always scared of like losing it. And I have lost it quite a few times. And it keeps saying like uh, they are book can't be found. So that's been really really irritating. <laughs> yeah, and like whenever you go to, do get to the tasks, it's like. I mean it is kind of cool whenever you see stuff like appearing from this book like on your 3DS but like the tasks so far haven't been that interesting there's been ones where it's like there's one I done last night it was like a hide and seek thing where it's like this ghost kept moving between different pages and that so I was flicking through the book four or five times to get to the page where like it sort of give you a hint of where he's hiding I go to that page and then spend about five minutes trying to fill around to get <laughs> to get it to work and then move to another page like all right go back again so how many pages are there in this book um there's probably about must be about 15 something like that not too many um yeah it's not a very long game i don't think it's going to be very challenging (laughs) see the annoying thing for me is towards the start of the game you're walking down this like uh corridor it's like automatically walking down this like digitized corridor it's it sort of gives the impression that there could be something good there if they just like uh, made the game around that sort of idea because like you're walking down the corridor and you can like just look around completely in 360 yourself with the 3ds in your hands and like turn around fully and you can see everyone so like it's really good like you hear wee noises or whatever you can look and see where it's coming from and stuff but the game doesn't really revolve around that and that's a real shame because you could be sitting like you'd have all the lights out in your house and like I imagine that would be a really creepy experience but the way this is it's just and the way the book works you're always always faffing around with this book and you need like the lights on all the time just so so <laughs> like any chance of being like scared not that I, <laughs> it's really scary anyway but any chance of being like creeped out by anything is just totally lost because of the the fact that you have to be in full light all the time so yeah really disappointing and the reviews are probably pretty fair <laughs> that I've read like it's <laughs> it's really not a good game I will finish it I think but yeah it's a, a wee bit disappointing <laughs> how many hours he put in so far i'd say probably only about an hour an hour and a half it's been really tough to get time recently so i think the games will only last about three hours or so yeah nice short one it's a shame because yeah. the, the the ar cards that came you know the question mark and all that that came with the 3ds itself the ar games with the fishing and the, the golf and all that they worked really well yeah very very stable yeah i mean I'm not sure I can be that disappointed because like my history with like the Project Zero games is uh, I got the one that was released on the Wii, uh, Project Zero Two, and I actually quite liked it. Um, and then there was the one that came out on the Wii U, made of Blackwater, and I regret buying it because I actually thought it was pretty terrible. And it's, it must have been about 15, 15 or twenty hours or something that's put into that, and I just kept waiting for it to get good, and it just it never did. I played the demo of that, the Maiden of the Blackwater, the Wii U one, and the- pace of it was so pedestrian that it really put me off buying the whole thing yeah i and like the way the camera works in this here it's like uh basically like sometimes you'll see the ghosts going around in the in the room you're in and you like rotate it to find them and then once you're like locked onto them like the wee i think it's a spirit gauge or something that's called will like rise up so whenever like the ghosts close in like you'll do more damage to them whenever you take the picture with the camera so that's just like the same here but it's not that fun <laughs> Face Raiders, going to be Face Raiders. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, one yeah. of the free AR games. That, yeah, that was pretty fun. It's I, not, it's, it's like that, but really, really slow. Yeah, I would say Face Raiders is probably more fun. <laughs> Although, having said no, that, no, no. At, at the start of this game, it does get you to like uh, take a picture of yourself, which is like I assume is like going to be like you're going to be the final boss, the <laughs> something like that. Like I, I did see myself appear <laughs> last night, and like. I showed it to my son, <laughs> and like I turned into like this 
sort of like monster. <laughs> so he's called me a monster. Like probably shouldn't have been showing him when he's only two. Like that. He'll get over it. I'm gonna do Fair this enough. tonight when you're sleeping. <laughs> 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 right. So that sounds enough. That sounds terrible, but you, de- you deserve everything you get picking that up. <laughs> <laughs> Glutton for punishment. Um, so the game I'm going to talk about, I was going to talk about a game called Butcher, which I finished this week, um, which is a really great little Contra-style retro you know, shooter. Yeah, I've been thinking about picking that up myself. Uh, looks good. Oh, it's well worth it. I picked up and yeah, it is, it's good. It's really cheap as well. It is a good little game, but I'm not because a game turned up and I was like, ah, surely I have to t- talk about this. Um, and this is... Taiko Drummaster. I was very excited about this. I love the Taiko games. I love music games. I love rhythm games. I am still a sucker for a peripheral. I still Donkey Kong in the drums is still one of my favourite sort of experiences. And I was all into sort of like rock band and guitar hero and and um, Samba de Amigo stuff like that. So I, I was very excited when it's got announced for um, the Switch. And I pre-ordered it uh, from Play Asia, and it was it was expensive. It was like 140 quid for the drum and the game, which is a lot of money. But I was like, well, it's a it's a good experience. I'm going to go for it. And then then all the rumours started flying around about that it's coming over to the West, the drum and fun. I mean, it blatantly is coming over here. And that was just before it was going to be released. But I just, so I just thought, you know what? I'm going to cancel the pre-order. I'm not going to get the Japanese version. I'm just going to wait for it to come out in the West. Everything's going to be good. And then literally the same day I, I decided to do it, I got a, a notification saying, oh, we're taking your money out of your account. We're going <laughs> to ship it in a couple of days. And I was just like, oh, I probably still could have cancelled it. But I thought, oh, you know what? They've sent it. it I'm sure it'll have drastically different um, sort of playlists anyway. It's got so much sort of Japanese music and J-pop and stuff like that. So I'm sure it'll be very different to the, to the Western version. So I thought, I'll go for it anyway. And then, um, and then it came. And I had to pay £40 taxes on top of that. So this game cost £180. You could have bought a second Switch. I know, <laughs> I know. It's Oh, God. But anyway, <laughs> I bought it and I've got it. Uh, and it's brilliant. <laughs> it is really good. It's, <laughs> it's exactly what you expect it to be. It's a Taiko drum game. The drum itself is really good. The, um, the sticks are a little bit... F- kind of hollow pl- cheap plastic than they, than they anticipated them to be it's definitely not but cheap but it is <laughs> well no, no, no. <laughs> I mean it, it was cheap for them to make it uh, but not necessarily cheap for them to sell it on um, but, but it is just really really good fun I'm so glad I've got it the music's great it's got weird it's got the one up superstar on it but it's the English I don't know if there even is a Japanese I presume there's a Japanese sort of lyric version but it's the English version to that um, I don't quite know where I'm doing navigating the menus but I've I got to songs and I've got to play there's sort of like four difficulties for each one and it's hard you know even on the very the basic one is it's um, tricky enough but um, the, 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 I just had a little go on the hardest one and it was, it was very difficult but I played it with Hugo Hugo loves it um, but um, and, and I gave it a go on my own as well and um, probably put a couple of hours into it and um, and it is just really good fun I'm looking forward to playing it more I'm, I'm more looking forward to the English patch which is coming out in August so I actually know what is going on because I think there's a lot of mini games and a lot more to it than, than I can figure out and because it's just come out I, I can't quite find anything like if usually there'll, there'll be a translation um, any day now I'd imagine kind of navigating through the menus but it's just really good fun I'm really glad I've got it I've got to try and forget how much I bought it for and um, and, and play it but um, does it, are, are any of you guys interested in this uh, when it comes out when Drum and Fun comes out in, in well the Taiwan is uh, very heavily influenced by Japan so if you go into an arcade here you'll see Taiko Drum Master games there you know with the huge drums and the proper wooden sticks yeah. and you can beat that drum like like nobody's business it is is it it's based it must be based on the same so you got the left hand side of the drum hits when you got a red icon who is called don chan and you the right hand side of the drum is for the blue icon is that right katsu chan uh not quite no um <laughs> It's not the. It's not left and right. You've you've been playing it wrong. <laughs> um, so <laughs> so red. So you, although it does indicate that you can press left and right, but that's more when you have to do both at the same time. So it knows you're doing okay. both. Um, but um, it's not the left and right. It's the top of the drum, which is the red icon, and blue is the side of the drum. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So if you know if you play a real drum, you kind of hit the side and it's got a different sound. In the arcade, they've got like um, a full red and a full blue, and then and then like like a, a I can't remember if it's a red with a yellow circle around it or a or a, or a hollow red, and then that's the side one. So you got the left, right, and then you got oh, okay. the side left and the side right as well. So you got four different, and then you got both of them together as well. 
So there are because f- the, the drums. Oh, are okay. Huge, so. Maybe I've been playing it wrong. <laughs> I hope I've been playing it right. <laughs> <laughs> no, either this is a seriously gimped version of it, or I may be. Because I, I only played hard on, but maybe that is on for the later difficulties and on that it, it has even more. That makes loads How of sense. How big is that drum? It's maybe twelve inches. Oh, not bad. Across not bad. twelve inches. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe a bit more. I'm trying to think. Yeah, maybe a bit more than that. Um, it's, it feels like a good size. The actual drum itself is actually pretty. It's pretty good. It's the sticks I was particularly disappointed with. And when you were talking about the big wooden sticks that you can batter it with, I was I was getting stick envy. <laughs> but um, it's uh, yeah, the drum itself is all right. Um, it's it's got like the full controls as well. Yeah. Really really great game and but it's it's notorious for its level of difficulty you've got a you've got to really hit it on rhythm or you're gonna you're not gonna be successful oh really yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to playing it. like i say I, I pretty much any rhythm game i love even the ones on the um on the switch like Vowes and demo or demo and stuff like that you know theater rhythm donkey konga all you know anything elite b agents that you mentioned earlier greg oh, i'd love another one of them but um, so yeah, so I'm I, I'm looking forward to getting kind of getting stuck into it um, um, a little bit more, and I'm and I'll buy the Western version as well, you know, may as well. And if it's reasonably cheap, I may get into the drum for two player, but we'll see, we'll see about that. So, are you actually going to pick it up? It is a kind of game that I would love as well. Yeah, I love my uh, you know the the rhythm Final Fantasy that was fantastic, Rhythm Paradise or Rhythm Heaven games. I can't remember which one it is in Europe. I'm longing for a good rhythm game, and this looks like it could be it. And, and it's the Japanese version now I can actually pick up I can actually go to a, a physical store and buy it from somewhere in Taiwan so I, I should be on top of that really oh yeah definitely and also you can I, I, should, I should have tried it out before I spoke about it today sorry about this um, but I should have tried out the actual Joy-Con mode just to see how, how well it works just using the Joy-Cons as sticks um, without the drum itself should have seen what that was like um, Greg are you interested in it I know you like a rhythm game I definitely like. I can imagine it's the sort of game that will be really fun to play with my son Jagged uh, at some point, like even my wife might <laughs> might even join in as well. Like so, yeah. Whenever the Western release comes, there's, there's no way I'm paying a hundred eight quid to get it from <laughs> from Japan. <laughs> from Japan, but yeah, definitely when it comes out here, like yeah, don't see why not. Yeah, if I'd have known, I wouldn't have paid a hundred and eighty pound either. But it, just, it's a, it's a, it was a turn of events which was out of my control. <laughs> they need to put in uh, Donkey Konga bongo support, huh? Instead of the drum, just get the bongos on the go. Yeah, they. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. They could do that. You got left, right. You hit the yeah. side as well um Oh, Donkey Konga. Can you remember the patent that was released a month or so ago, a few months ago, which is a Donkey Konga patent? Oh, they, they renewed it, is that correct? No, it, was a, it wasn't just a renew, it was like a specific patent for the Switch. Oh, okay. Oh, that, that would be drum. really good news. Unless, unless, <laughs> unless I just dreamt that. <laughs> Maybe I dreamt it. <laughs> that in Wave Race. news to me. Uh, but um, I, I, think, I think it did, anyway. Um, but um, So anyway, but that's what I've been playing, and I'm going to keep playing that lots and lots and lots. Um, so, But next, uh, we've got another listener question and this one this week comes from someone from twitter it's nintendo ph and they said what are your favorite wii u games um now uh, we're gonna do some lists on our favorite you know official sort of nintendo review list for all the kind of nintendo consoles and stuff like that so we don't want our top tens or anything like that but just like a, a couple of games which for you sort of typify why the wii u was a was an underrated genius console or maybe you don't think that at <laughs> all um i don't know so greg is there a couple of games that you think of on the Wii U? Uh, well, most of the good stuff has been ported over to the Switch because you'd easily have said stuff like uh, the Icon Country, Tropical Freeze, Captain Toad, Mario Kart. Yeah, Mario Kart. I th- may even be my favourite Wii U game, but like, um, I always actually really enjoyed uh, Nintendo Land. I remember my, actually my first experience with the Wii U was uh, there's an HMV up in Belfast and like. I walked into it and there's this demo unit set up and the first moment I put my hands on that gamepad it was like this thing's awful <laughs> like it just didn't feel comfortable at all and then like I wasn't really like planning to get the Wii U for a while but like the most amazing gift for Christmas like my brother actually bought me the Wii U like completely out of nowhere it's, like the most generous gift probably I've ever had in my life and like it came with Nintendo Land and it brought me New Super Mario Bros. U as well. But like, Nintendo Land was loads of fun. Like, maybe not like, uh, there's like three main games in it, like the Zelda, Metroid, and Pikmin games, or maybe like the three main single player sort of experiences in it. I never really got on with them, but it's like the wee ones were like uh, the Donkey Kong. Uh, Crash Course. I forget what it's called. Crash Course or whatever. That was pr- 
probably my favourite one in the collection, or like the Wii F Zero game was fun as well, and or the Yoshi one where you have to like draw the path rounds. Like I actually had a really good time with that, and I'm not sure you could really port that to the Switch, but I kind of would like a port of it if possible. I'm absolutely with you. I think Nintendo Land is 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 absolutely amazing. All the single play games are great. The ones you did, you know, like Luigi, the Luigi's Mansion one, and the Animal Crossing one. You know, those um, and the, the Mario Run in particular. They, if you can get five people together, they were some of the greatest multiplayer experiences I've had, and anybody can play. I played that with the kind of people who have never played games before, Mar- Mario Run, and it's I, th- I think it's amazing, and I would love... The only way you could do it, I guess, is, is online. That would be amazing. You, you need to hide an aspect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mar- Mario Run online. I think you mentioned yeah, last last week, you know, a couple of weeks ago, about, you know, Fortnite's got that Battle Royale. Let's have... Let's have a, a large map and a Mario chase royale. A yeah. hundred people. Mario has to chase down. Yeah. Like British Bulldog style, whatever. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I, I, I think it'd be yeah. amazing. I think it'd be absolutely amazing. Um, but um, so I'm with you there, Greg. So, yeah. uh, any others? Um, just a couple of RE mentions, maybe for... Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World is a really good... Uh, platform i thought it was really good and zombie u was fun as well yeah and star fox zero like i know there's problems with it but like i had a really really good time with it too zombie U multiplayer i've i've put a lot a lot a lot of time in it's local only which is a shame but that that was i put a lot of time into that i don't know if you tried mm-hmm. that out but um but um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Good choices, good choices. Um, Lee, do you have any on top of that? Um, the, the couple that stick out for me were the wonderful 101. Not because of its integration with the gamepad, which was rather poor, but, you know, it was platinum games at their most platinum. Uh, wonderful beat-em-up and slight RPG mechanics of getting extra characters in and, and pushing the, the the field of what you can do within a game to Bayonetta levels and maybe even surpassing Bayonetta for me. Really, really good game. I would love to see, that's one of the games yeah. that's that I would love to see a remastering of for the Switch. Really? Yeah, yeah, I would love to see it. The only thing it's missing, though, is the two-player mode was rather, rather scanty clad very very limited I think it was only about six levels you could play through and they were specifically for two players but if if you could put two players on this wonderful 101 throughout the entire one player campaign mode it would be phenomenal so much fun was was that not teased at one point for the for the switch yes, yeah, yes it's, it was, it's yeah. been teased yeah. by Kamiya, is it that the one of the head honchos of yeah, um, platinum yeah. games yeah quite a few times the, the main director yeah. yeah yeah see i think that's one i'd maybe be interested in as well because like i only ever played the demo of it on wii u and i never really got on with it it's just something about it i didn't like but i'd probably be prepared to give it a go again because like i wasn't really into bayonetta back then either but like i played the bayonetta 2 on on wii u and then switch and like I actually kind of enjoyed it in the end, so prepared to give it a go. Yeah, it's got so many similarities to Bayonetta, but um, the the humour, Bay- Bayonetta's humour is all that risque stuff, which you can take it or leave it. Oh, it's awful. Uh, it's awful. Uh, <laughs> the wonderful 101 humour is my so so much better yeah it is it's a really good game really good game and i was just gonna say personally i'd rather a sequel than than i wouldn't be excited at all if they just re you know fair enough if they just re-release it on the on the switch for people who didn't play it but i'd be it wouldn't i wouldn't want to play through it again on, on the switch i'd rather wonderful 102 yeah that's fair but, enough yeah you're gonna say another game i so. was i was um and one that came out on other platforms and when it came out on wii u people were saying oh my god that just doesn't look as good and it's got problems and it's screen tearing and and I played through the entire game and I think it only froze for a couple of seconds once throughout the entire so I was really really well impressed by Batman Arkham City Armored Edition really really solid beat em up game free roaming throughout the entire entirety of Arkham City can't say enough good things about it yeah Arkham City I mean Arkham Asylum is, is brilliant Arkham City is an, an, a, an amazing sequel it's like it takes everything that's great about that and, and it, I think improves and I think some people like the setting of Arkham Asylum which is fair enough but I'm with you I, I had it on Playstation 3 4 3 I can't even remember now 3 it would have been wouldn't it um, I played it on that and I bought it on the Wii U and played it on the Wii U and it had some nice gamepad features as well yeah. and brilliant game with you with you on that one I'm slightly disgusted um, although not surprised <laughs> knowing how scummy you I know two what are say. that none of you have mentioned Pikmin 3 <laughs> no I specifically did not mention because I knew I was leaving it for you <laughs> oh okay <laughs> Fair I was like surely someone's going to say it Pikmin 3 Pikmin 3 is 
I think, well, it's, it wouldn't be my number one game on the platform, I don't think, but it's, I'd say it's the best Wii U game, um, in my opinion. I, I think it's, I think the Pikmin series is, is every single one of them are masterpieces. I think Pikmin 3 is the best of the lot. Like I keep saying, <laughs> it's got one of the greatest multiplayer experiences of all time. Fucking bingo battle. When I, I remember when hearing that, I was like, bingo battle? What <laughs> is that? And, um, oh, it's the most addictive thing I've ever experienced. Oh, that's what it is. But, so that, I mean, that's my favourite game, but it's, it's always tricky to kind of judge these games as Wii U games but Wind Waker HD Wind Waker is an, is, was an amazing GameCube game and Wind Waker HD is an even better version of the game than that it looks it's everything about it is it was an amazing um, experience playing through that again on, on the Switch and, and the changes just only made it even better and then just a couple of Mario sort of nods for me personally Mario Maker absolute uh-huh. it's a new IP yeah. incredible game and Super Mario 3D World I think it's a you know I, like I've you know I've mentioned it on, on the podcast a few times um, I've I've played through and finished it um, in the past couple of weeks and I loved it. I remember loving it at the time and then you, sort of time goes on and, and everyone's a bit n- negative about it and I was like no it's a really good game but it's still not up there with the likes of say Galaxy and 64 and obviously recently Odyssey but playing through it again I was just like no this game is incredible you know and if you know n- n- you know, I don't, we don't, I don't want to be sort of Nintendo fanboy, fanboyish about it but if Crash or Spyro played like, if another game <laughs> that wasn't Mario played like this Mario I think everyone would be going oh my god this is incredible. Yeah, they'd probably be even touting it as some Mario beta, you know, wouldn't they? No, it's it's. I, I love yeah, the more yeah. focused spaces in it as well. They really play well. Yeah, yeah. I actually want to throw it out there. I actually think I had a, a lot better time with it than I did with Super I'm Mario with, Odyssey. Oh, I, I'm sorry, well. Darren, but I'm with Greg on this as well. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I wish I never brought it up now. <laughs> <laughs> like, Od- Odyssey's amazing, but I think like. I like the more focused levels as well. So like I had like there's more variety and like the challenges are all different and stuff. I think it was like I think it's better. That's fair enough. Oh my god, that's fair <laughs> enough. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but but anyway, but either way, it is it is very good and very underrated. I feel. But um, I think the, the Wii U is is very. I, I do actually believe it is underrated. I think um, it didn't have enough. It obviously has got so many problems with it. I'm not kind of stupid about that. And the, within the console itself, within how everything about it was a, a massive. <laughs> to be honest from Nintendo but I think if you take the top 10 games on that system it can compete with any system that's ever been released in my opinion I think the, the top 10 games on it are incredible games but um, especially if you sort of consider Breath of the Wild as a Wii U game as well but um, that's um, oh yeah I forgot about that one entirely yeah. so yeah because yeah, obviously we just see it as a Switch yeah. game don't we but um, but, but anyway so um, yeah thank you Nintendo <laughs> PH for that question we will we're going to do a lot more thinking about this and we'll maybe do like a top 10 video or something like that about, about you know kind of all the Wii U games um, as well so thank you so now we're going to get on to the topic of the week. This week, it's... It's a, it's a great topic, actually. Um, it is, do you need more than one console to be satisfied in 2018? Um, obviously, there's three really vibrant platforms. Mobile gaming is, a, is, an, is an incredible platform for gaming now as well. Obviously, PC. Sorry, I didn't mean to rule PC out as well. But um, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing time to be a gamer. There's so much content... Um, out there far too much to play as we kind of allude to every week so but can you ever be satisfied with one console greg i'm guessing lee can because isn't Nint- actually we'll start with lee because you said that you've been nintendo only do you ever feel like you're, you're left out um i'm you know i'm guessing you don't i'm guessing you are satisfied but you know i'd love to hear your thoughts on that and and how you feel about the competition and the games that you you've never played there there are certain games come up you know like the new spider-man game for ps4 and i think oh yeah they, they would love to be putting some time into that and even when batman came out and there was no hope of it coming onto a onto a nintendo console i know it did later on the wii u there are certain games but they're few and far between I've, I've looked at games like god of war and i'm thinking yeah it looks good but i've been playing Bre- zelda breath of the wild or something at that time and I, this is covering me in that kind of genre um so i've never really missed out too much because if i if i did pick up a ps4 now i'd only buy one or no well, not one maybe three or four games maximum on it i just always i always ask the question how do people find the time to have two or three consoles <laughs> and that's that's what holds me back 
and plus the quality and my love of Nintendo, I'm not, I'm not going to go anywhere else, to be honest. So obviously, we're so that's the question was 2018, but sort of like you kind of have you always just been satisfied with it? You know, even in the kind of Wii U's dark days, even the N64 dark days, or towards the end of the Wii's life, things like that. You know, has there ever been times when you've gone, you know what? You could, have, you know, you mentioned before that you kind of got a bit fed up with the Wii U, for example. And you never played Toad for that reason, but you know, has there ever been times when you've been like, oh god, maybe I need to pick up another console maybe I'm, I'm getting a bit bored there's not enough to play have you ever had those moments surely no I still haven't this is so diff- I'm such a strange guy <laughs> um, I've been looking at the other consoles even, yeah. even back in PS1 and my mate was playing Command and Conquer or, or some other game you know Tekken Tekken was one of his favourites and I go across and I play a couple of games with him local multiplayer and then I'd be so much happier going back and playing Goldeneye you know or, or dragging my <laughs> Nintendo 64 through to his house and we'd be so much Chappie are playing Goldeneye together. So even through droughts and ga- you know the end of the GameCube, the end of the Wii U, most of my droughts tend to be self-imposed. They they tend to be that I've got too much of a backlog, okay. and I've gone to myself, right? I'm not going to buy anything now because I know another console is coming out within a year. I'm going to finish off what I've got, and that's what kind of you know the the kind of late games like Captain Toad and the Wii U. The only reason I really didn't pick it up is. I had too much to play so I'm not missing out on getting another console because I've got plenty to be getting on with that's fair enough that's fair enough so basically you are and always have been more than satisfied with just the one console obviously you've had the 3DS I presume do, do, you, do you get the handheld yeah yeah whatever, whatever Nintendo puts out yeah, I yeah, think yeah. I think the only handheld console I never had was the GBA and that was uh, <laughs> that was a poor student era and it was GameCube or GBA and GameCube won out. That's fair enough. I think I was at uni as well when that when um, the GBA came out and stuff. Um, but um, I picked up. I think I think the GBA actually is one of the worst consoles I've ever released. <laughs> I really. Um, and especially yeah. looking. Yeah, I do. In all honesty, I think. Yeah, I agree. Okay. You Glad look back and you happen. think about what games were on it. And you're like, there wasn't, that, there wasn't a proper Mario game on it. They just re-released all the um, yeah. There was a lot of re-releases. The NES ones, yeah. didn't they, and stuff. And it did, it did give us Advance Wars. That's true. So it wasn't all bad. I mean, I had fun with it <laughs> at the time, and I never felt it at the time as such. But it's just looking back and thinking of the games that were on it. It's like. God, it was pretty poor. It was really poor. I mean, maybe because I was a student and busy, and I didn't really notice it and didn't care at the time. But I, th- I think it's one of the worst. But um, anyway, that's another. Maybe that's another t- another topic for another time. Um, Greg, I know you've dabbled in other consoles and stuff, but been a, an ardent Nintendo fan. But how do you feel? Again, I, I I'm, I'm kind of a, changing the question a little bit. I like. I want to hear about your past as well, but particularly now as well. Um, today, can you be satisfied? But um, well, yeah. Like I've largely been mostly Nintendo as well. Like if there's a new console coming out it's it's always a nintendo one i'll get first and then usually i'll end up picking up one of the playstations like maybe towards the end of its life or whatever and pick up a few games for cheap um because like if you're looking for maybe like story driven games or like even shooters or something the nintendo platform is generally not really the place for them but like as i've said in the past like shooting games isn't really like high up on my list of like desires so never really felt like I was missing out there, but stuff like Uncharted and like maybe Shadow of the Colossus and stuff, like those are the sort of games that always looked quite appealing to me, but I got to be honest and like I picked up a few games for the PS4 around Christmas time there. Uh, like I picked up Shadow of the Colossus and uh, The Last Guardian and um, Until Dawn, I can't even remember what else it was, Yakuza. And like I look at these games and like God of War and stuff, and it's like I'm supposed to like these games because like they get these amazing reviews and stuff, and like I just never get that sort of satisfaction that I do from playing like the latest Mario or Zelda or like any of these games on the Nintendo platform. It's just it's something different. It just doesn't doesn't catch me the same. So like I'm almost at the stage where I, s- I kind of think like the PS4 might be my last non-Nintendo console going forward because the Switch sort of satisfies everything that I really need. And like if I ever like run out of games to players on like I've got this massive collection of games from like 
the <laughs> history of Nintendo on like PlayStation stuff. If you go back to one of those games that you haven't played in like ten or fifteen years, you've forgotten most of it, and it's it's near like playing a new game again. I don't really feel like I need another console going forward again. It's just like Nintendo will will see me through. So so weirdly, like you, you're more satisfied now. So t- now. You you even more inclined to be like actually I, I can be satisfied with one one console more so than in the past. Yeah, it's almost at the situation where it's like I could possibly never buy another game again. And like <laughs> I've got enough here, enough nuts stored away to, to see me through the winter of life. Yeah, but like yeah. I do remember looking back at like um, it was just before the GameCube came out, uh, the Christmas before it came out, the PlayStation Two I think had just been sort of released. And my friends, they were all like PlayStation and Sega or whatever growing up. So like they had got, a, well one of my friends had got a PS2. And I remember playing like a SSX demo and stuff at his house. And I was sort of like, I was almost tempted at that point. Like I remember actually asking my parents for a PS2 that Christmas. Just because like I knew Pro Evolution Soccer was coming out. And loved that on the PS1 at the time. So like I kind of wanted that at the time. But then... I didn't get it, and thankfully, whenever my birthday came around in May, just after the GameCube's launch, uh, my parents were kind enough to to get me the GameCube for my birthday, and like never looked back. Like I was so glad that I didn't get the PS2 at the time because the GameCube is amazing. Yeah, that's fair enough. It, it is a tricky one, is that? I mean, kind of broadly, like, you know, in terms of answering the question, can you be satisfied with one console? I think I think it depends on. Obviously, it, it, these are all our personal stories, and we can only speak from that. But if if gaming is like your main hobby. And you want to experience the best gaming has to offer. You, but it probably isn't enough. You know, it's like for some people, and and Matt and I kind of teeter on the edge of this. Is that some? You know, it's like I I want to play every amazing game. You know, I want to play Uncharted. I want to play The Last of Us. I mean, I wish I never, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I look, Uncharted's amazing. I'm, I'm not a massive fan of Last of Us, but um, but it's like you know, it's like if if, if you love gaming then you want to play the best experiences and you have to have an ex- you have to have every platform to experience every single thing it's like i'm a, i'm obsessed with film i c- couldn't not watch every film i wanted to watch i would have to you know, I, I will watch every single film I you know, possible. But then on the flip side, you know, you know, so I can sort of understand where people have multiple consoles, and I've owned pretty much every console, and so I get that. And but I think people maybe could be satisfied with 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 one console, if, whatever console that is, not just Nintendo. I think if you had a PlayStation Four, you know, there's probably enough there. If you do, you know, even the Nintendo style experiences and stuff, there's you know, to kind of be satisfied with it. But um, but we all have our sensibilities. But it's also just like there is, I think, like what Lee alluded to is that time is. The, is the big factor um, in terms of you know especially as we get older and we, maybe we get families we have other hobbies we have work it's there's only so much time it's like you know it's just it's like watching subscribing to netflix sky amazon prime and then apple are going to release theirs and stuff and disney are going to release theirs and so it's like yeah i want to watch all this content but realistically what's the point in, in you know having all these services you know it's, it's sort of similar so so it's a very difficult thing, but you know, can you be satisfied? Yeah, definitely. But if you if this is your big passion, then you know you're going to be missing out on a, a lot of amazing games um, on, on the other platforms as well. But for, for me personally, I've owned pretty much every single console there's, there's ever been um, from. Master System, Mega Drive, Mega CD, 32X, Atari Lynx, the Game Gear, the X, you know, all of them. Um, the only one I didn't buy, I've, I haven't had, is the Xbox One. That's the only console that I've never actually... I even had, had Atari Jaguar. Actually, yeah. um, was, Tempest was amazing. And and I'm sort of pleased... I, I, but weirdly, I'm at the point now where I don't think I want to own all these consoles anymore. I just... I don't... And, and a lot of it is... It's kind of what you're used to turning on. Really trivial, but like I've, I have some amazing games on the PlayStation 4. For the Tomb Raider sequel, I love the Tomb Raider reboot, and I'm and I've played started playing the Tomb Raider sequel, and it's amazing. But I just don't want to play it. It's just like I can't be bothered to turn the PlayStation Four off on because it's not the console that I go to. It's the Switch is what I I kind of just naturally want to turn on and play. It's, it's so weird. It's such a psychological thing, but I don't have the desire to turn the PlayStation Four on and play the games on it, even though I have some amazing games. I have the Walking Dead season two. I played the Walking Dead season one, loved it. I've Walking Dead season two. I should I want to play it, but I can't be. It's not. It's not lazy. I don't know what it is. It's like I, you only have so much time, and it's like I know I want to play on the Switch. So if, when Walking Dead season two comes on the Switch, I'll definitely play it. Um, it's like Lee was on about Batman. When as soon as it came to the Wii U, we wanted to play it. It's like there's sort of there's something there, and I think it is because I don't have loads of time, and I want to play generally Nintendo games, but I want to play on the Nintendo system. So 
and and more and more I'm 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 like that now. And also as we get older, like what you alluded to, Greg, is like I'm desperate to I want to dive back into all the retro games. I want to play loads of games that I used to play in my youth and, and go through that, like the SNES Classic. I bought a SNES Classic, haven't touched it, and and I want to play some games on that. And I, and that appeals to me more now than playing The Last of Us Two and even maybe even Spider Man, even though that I'm you know it. I, I sh- I'm kind of excited about that game. Now I can be satisfied with just a Switch. I think I think I am. I am going to sell my PlayStation Four and PlayStation VR, and I love the VR. It's a bit of a cheat because if I get the urge, I'm going to buy a PlayStation Pro. That's my 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 my, 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 my back up to that. When I, I'm moving house in a couple of months, and I'm going to re-kit out my, my sort of like audio and visual entertainment systems so i'll probably end up buying a playstation 4 pro so i'm going to sell that now and then if I, they're like no i want to play spider-man um then i'm, I'm just going to buy another one <laughs> so it's a bit of a cheat but i do do just want to play switch there's you know what 900 games on the system can i be satisfied with it yeah i am satisfied i am touched from playstation 4 in months and i, I have no urge whatsoever to do it um so switch all the way as long as he keeps getting keeps getting the games and we are all going to miss out on some amazing games but there's enough amazing games on every system for, for, for us to be satisfied so um, yes yeah, so that's kind of where, where, where I sit really and now I've got Taiko Drum Master I don't want to play anything else anyway so yeah. um, stuff it Good. and when Wave Race comes out in a couple of months <laughs> and the wealth of um, Nintendo Switch Online backward compatible NES NES GameCube N64 games come out <laughs> All sorted, yeah? <laughs> exactly. Well, when Spider-Man come out? September. Oh, it's just like, why would I want to play Spider-Man when I can play Balloon Fight online there with a friend? Uh, so, yeah, so th- there we go. We are all obviously severely... We, we do a Nintendo podcast, so of course we're kind of going to kind of um, be very Nintendo-focused with that. But um, the other systems are all, are all brilliant. Don't have the time or the desire for them anymore. So good. So thank you, everybody, for listening into this epic podcast. <laughs> Imagine how long this would be if, G- G- if JBS actually joined us for one. Yeah, and added, added another... <laughs> 20 minutes of uh, what you've been playing yeah exactly <laughs> exactly um, but um, thank you as always everybody and uh, we'll um, see you next week bye 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 thank you for listening to the Nintendo Review Podcast you can find this very podcast on SoundCloud iTunes Stitcher Google Play TuneIn and YouTube just search for the Nintendo Review Podcast don't forget to give us a review and ask us a question we are also on Twitter Facebook and Instagram where you'll find great content such as news reviews and streams of course you'll find us at nintendoreview.co.uk and check out our Nintendo Review Discord channel for lively discussion, meetups, and in-game voice chat. Drop by and say hello.